I'm Ryan Hill. I'm John Galantis. And you're listening to Clearview Today with Dr. Abadan Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. Or if you have any questions for Dr. Shah or suggestions for new topics, send us a text to 252-582-5028. Or you can email us at contact at clearviewtodayshow.com. That's right. And you guys can help us keep the conversation going by supporting the show, sharing it online, leaving us a good review on iTunes, Spotify, and where you get your podcasting content from. We're going to leave some links in the description so you can do just that. And today's verse of the day is coming to us from Psalm 1414. Do not incline my heart to evil, to any evil thing, to practice wicked works with men who work iniquity, and do not let me eat of their delicacies. It's so interesting to me that David here is asking God to protect him mm-hmm. from evil desire. That's right. From evil temptation. Notice the word that he uses at the end there. Do not let me eat of their delicacies. Right. Things that are nice and mm-hmm. desirable and wonderful. Because if sin wasn't desirable, what well, I mean, we wouldn't be tempted to do yeah, it. Yeah, we think we think of sin as this ugly, dark, black, oozing monster that's like crawling around in our hearts, and it is that. But that's not how it appears to us. No, you know, David experienced this intimate, holy relationship with God, but he also understood what it meant to fail God. He knew what it was to sin and to let God down, and so guarding his heart and guarding our hearts is, is critical. Guarding our hearts against those things that tempt us. You know, David didn't want any part of evil at all, even the parts that are nice and yep. are pleasant. He didn't want any part of it at all. Absolutely. And I, I love the I love the setup there. Are you willing to pray that same prayer? Mm-hmm. Are you willing to ask God to keep things from you that may you may desire, but you know are evil, you know are sinful, you know will lead you to places you have no business going? That's, are you yeah. willing to ask God to keep those things from you? That's a difficult prayer because yep. I, I want these pleasantries of life. Sure. You know, I want the comforts that come along with life. But at the end of the day, if it keeps us from God, Right, you know, they're just they're just not worth it. Absolutely. Um, I had a I had a uh, text come in earlier today. By the way, thank you guys for texting in all your questions and, and giving us podcast banter. We love to uh, read these and and uh, and just get, knowing and just hearing from you. I mean, yeah. we love knowing there's uh, people on the other side of these cameras and microphones that are listening to us and are enjoying the daily show. So let's keep those texts coming. Yeah, I wake up. I wake up and there's like. 20 text messages. I'm like, man, people are really loving this show. This guy, David S., he writes in, hey guys, super behind on the podcast, but I'm loving the great fried debate. Everybody goes back to the fried debate. Something about that. That was a big one. Something about that fried debate resonated with people. So thank you. Thank you for listening. Uh, My question is, catch up on top or catch up on the side? Ooh. Let's answer on three let's answer on three answer on three all right ready because i think i think i know exactly what you're gonna do and i'm pretty sure you know what my answer is yeah. gonna be ready? one two three, three. On, on the top. side no, no i knew it no 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 you're such you, a, like a orderly little neat uh ketchup fry guy what is the purpose of ketchup it's made to dunk your fries in disagree I it's a it. topping it's a condiment you don't dunk your hot dog in ketchup you well, don't know but it, that's a hot dog that's not fries fries are meant to be made manipulated with your fingers yeah, sometimes. Or you can eat them with a fork. You ever eat chili cheese with fries with your finger? I'll eat French fries with a fork, especially if they're chili cheese fries. Well, a chili cheese fries are different. I mean, that's like a meal in itself. That's chili true. Chili cheese fries, are uh, that's a separate category for me. I put my ketchup on top, 100%. No, Dave, it's made what, for dunking. Dave, get in on this, buddy. What do you, what do you, what do you keep? Because I know, I know you get ketchup on your fingers. That's true. And you get ketchupy, you, salty Let me ask you this. You, mm-hmm, just like that. Do you, uh-uh. No, I don't want to lick all over my fingers We're in the eating. South. That's what you do. No. Ew. What if you have chicken nuggets, uh-huh. sauce on top or sauce on the side? I don't eat chicken nuggets, but I would dip. I would dip the chicken nuggets. Right. Because that's a dipping <laughs> sauce. Correct? <laughs> but I, I, Even I also- if you dip the chicken nuggets in something like honey mustard or mm-hmm, ranch, mm-hmm. things that are condiments, yeah. it's a dipping sauce on the side. Yeah, but chicken nuggets are a dip food. I, I don't think so fries. Are no, fries. I think fries. You pick it up. And no, no, no. David, what do you do? Ketchup on the side, on top, or ketchup on the side? I'm on the side. On the side. Everybody the side. I know on in my life side. is on the side. Nicholas, are you on the side as well? You're on. The, so everybody does it on the side. On the side. Now, that's because it's the correct way to do it. See, I like to do it. I like to do it on top of the fries, and then I sprinkle the salt so I can see the salt particles, and it's just it's just a nice, pleasant meal. And then if I'm like, man, this is really messy, I'll take a fork. Okay, I so fork. I hear you. You can put ketchup on the side and then salt the ketchup. Mm, I don't like to. I don't like to dip them. I don't. I don't want to dip fries. I just want to pick the fries up and eat it. I don't want to take the get, extra time. You want to get the ketchup on your hands. I like to have the ketchup on my hands. Gross. Yeah, and mm, I think it's no, just kind of. Like it's just kind of complete. It's the don't. same reason we don't have a thing of spaghetti and then dip it in sauce. You put the sauce on top and then you just eat it. Same thing with the fries. Same thing with the fries. No, <laughs> spaghetti and French fries are not the same thing. They're not the same thing, and they don't have to be. They don't have to be the same thing to have similarities. To have things in common. Disagree. Well, hard pass on that. I ketchup think, belongs on the side. I think 
I'm going to ask Dr. Shaw this at the end of the episode, but there's no way he puts the ketchup on top. Like, there's just absolutely no way. I, I doubt that seriously. He, I think, I'm pretty sure he puts it on the side. I think he puts it on the side, and then I think he would still eat them with a fork. He would, like, cut them up with a fork. And I, I, now, there are some times where I have, I have put them on the side, and I have eaten them with a fork just because I don't want to get that grease and salt all over my hands. Yeah, super greasy fries. Yeah. David, the... the you put it on the you put it on top. You but, put it on but, the side. David. The, Ryan's going to say you put it on the side, you and I think Doctor Shaw will too, and I think David will, and Nicholas has, and my wife would, and I think your wife would. So, so what we're seeing here is is a clear trend. Most people, I I do think most people eat them on the with ketchup on the side. I would say not. Now, I will say if it's an, any other sauce, got to go on the side. Like honey mustard, I wouldn't put it on top of the fries. Ranch but ketchup, would not put ketchup, it on, you ketchup. put it's aesthetic. It's aesthetic. It doesn't taste better. It's just aesthetic. It, this is the way that it's supposed to be meant. You put your ketchup on top of the fries, and then you eat the fries. Uh, I disagree with you on this. I don't know friend. what else to say. I don't know what else to say. David, let us know for you. Which one is it for you, on the side or on top? And the rest of you listening as well, let us know. Stay tuned for Dr. Shaw's answer as well. We're going to ask him at the end of the episode. But if you have any questions or suggestions for new topics, send us a text to 252-582-5028 or visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. We'll be back after this. Hey there, listeners. I'm John Galantis. And I'm Ellie Galantis. And we just want to take a quick second and talk to you about Dr. Shaw's and Nicole's book, 30 Days to a New Beginning, Daily Devotions to Help You Move Forward. You know, this is actually the second book in the 30 Days series. And the whole point of this devotional is to help us get unstuck from the ruts of life. You know, when it comes to running the race of life, it matters how you start, but a bad start doesn't ultimately determine how you finish the race. You can have a good finish even with a bad start, and that's where this book comes in. No matter who you are or where you are in life, you're going to get stuck. Instead of going out and buying some gadget or some planner, like I know I've done several times. I know that's right. 30 Days encourages you to find your fresh start in God's Word. Life doesn't have a reset button, but our God is a God who does new things. His mercies are new every day, which means every day is a new chance for you to start over. You can grab 30 Days to a New Beginning on Amazon.com. We're going to leave a link in the description box below. And if you already have the book, let us know what you think about it. That's right. Send us a text, 252-582-5028. Share what God has done in your life through this devotional. Hey, maybe we'll even read your story on the air. Ellie, you ready to get back to the show? Let's do it. All right. Welcome back to Clearview Today with Dr. Abadan Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com, or if you have any questions or suggestions for new topics, send us a text to 252 252- 582-5028. That's exactly right. And if this is your first time ever joining us here on the Clearview Today Show, I want to welcome you, let you know exactly who's talking to you today. Dr. Abadan Shah is a PhD in New Testament textual criticism, professor at Carolina University, author, full-time pastor, and the host of today's show. You can find all of his work at his website. That's abadanshah.com. And it's Friday. That means it is time for lightning round questions. I, wanna, oh, I don't want to wear the hat anymore. I want to do the I want to do the tie. You want the tie? Yeah, I think the hat makes me look kind of doof. Kind of doofy. Here's, here's the thing, though. Like, I, I have no problem switching. The hat does not fit my head. A hundred percent. We've tried. It does not. And I can't tie a fit. tie. So we're, we're Hold just going to... No, 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 no. I'm just saying, just, just try it on for a second. Oh, uh, it looks actually... It really doesn't fit. Nope. <laughs> you get a big it's like on your head. Not fit. It fits mine like, perfectly. Like though. Laurel from Laurel and Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> it a hundred percent does not fit my head. <laughs> Vaudeville's dead. And you know who killed it? The radio. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, we are excited about lightning round questions today. Dr. Questions. I mean, Dr. Shaw is in the in the house with us today. Nice. Uh, answering your questions, the questions that people have written in over the past few uh, days, some, some a couple weeks ago, but we like to compile them and air them on lightning round questions under a specific theme. So these are centered around maybe some personal questions, some questions sure. about people getting to know you a little bit better and you know, kind of life behind the scenes of Clearview today. Yeah, absolutely. So the first question today comes from Jonathan B. And Jonathan wants to know, what was the last big thing you changed your mind about? Ooh. Last big thing. Wow, what a question. That's a, yeah, that's no, that's a, a big that's one. An interesting question. That's, that's a, a big one. That's a big one. Wow. Well, the last big thing, I, I can I can go and answer that, is regarding generations. Mm. You mm. know, um, up until recently, how recently? I would say maybe about a year ago. I used to think, you know, this last generation, this generation IZ or um, even generation IY, 
you know, I'm, I'm sick and tired of their complaining, griping, lack of motivation, lack of work ethic, uh, just don't have the same values, just don't have the same sense of commitment. And I'm, I'm just frustrated with them. Mm. And But when I did my own study, you know, uh, strauss howe theory and, mm -hmm. and reading and studying what this generation is about, what is it that has caused them to feel and act the way they do mm -hmm. or think the way they do, uh, it's changed my approach. Mm. And it's no longer like, man, this generation is a bunch of losers or they're just weak or, uh, you know, just, just don't have what it takes to be successful. Now I look at them differently and I see them having certain strengths and um, uh, attributes that we don't have. Mm. Mm. So my opinion of Generation IZ okay, or Generation Z has changed. Wow. My opinion of the upcoming generation, because you know, usually we look at it as, oh, it's just going to go from bad to worse. Mm -hmm. But I believe Generation Alpha is going to turn things around. Wow. In a good way, in a different way. Yeah. If we give them the foundation they need, they, like like Gavin, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, Ash, uh, Asher, mm -hmm. and even Joanna is in that generation, mm -hmm. not Evie, right? Not Evie. Evie's technically Gen Z. So Joanna, Asher, uh, Gavin, Holden, mm -hmm. all this generation, I'm just mentioning the kids that are, you know, connected right. in this mm -hmm. room. Right. They will, they will not be like, oh my goodness, we just, we just, it's hopeless out there. Yeah. It's actually going to be a turnaround. Yeah. Wow. In a good way. Amen. In a different way. Amen. That's awesome. That's encouraging to hear. And if you guys haven't, if you're not familiar with uh, the episodes we've done on Generations or Dr. Shaw's messages on Generations, we encourage you guys to check those out. You can look back in the database if you're listening to this as a podcast, or you can check out, uh, his sermons out on his blog, abadanshah.com. That's right. We just did one with Nicole this past Monday. Yep. And we, uh, we did a, a bunch uh, a few months back. That's right. right. So... Those were really encouraging. Uh, Genevieve H., she actually wrote into the show a couple of days ago, and we answered it in one of our intros. We were going to ask you that day, and it must have just slipped our mind. But Genevieve H. wants to know, what advice do you wish you had taken? What advice wish I had taken? Wow, these questions today yeah, these are, are really these hard hitting questions. questions. Yeah. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me really want to think. So like, around. if you could be, like, if you could uh, be any kind of animal, what would you be? Like, <laughs> yeah. these are these are deep these existential are like, questions. You think, think you got to think on these ones. Well, I mean, one of the things my parents would always tell me is, um, you know, study. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Take the time to study, study. And thank goodness I took that advice, and it it worked out for me. Yeah. If if there was an advice that I wish I had taken more, is you know, sometimes I would hear is like, spend more time with your kids. Uh, you can't go wrong with that. That's mm. true. You know, no, I <laughs> haven't met a single person who said, man, I wish I had spent less time with my kids <laughs> 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 on their deathbed. It's like, boy, I wasted so much time. <laughs> Those kids, I tell you what, man. Yeah. <laughs> so if I could that's funny. take that advice, I would go back and spend even more time. Wow. Mm. That's awesome. Yeah. Our next question comes from Michael R., and Michael wants to know, what other podcasts or radio shows do you listen to or recommend? One I love listening to is uh, John Maxwell mm -hmm. show. You know, uh, it's actually the actual title of that. Let me go and find it right now for you. It is, it is the Maxwell Leadership Podcast. Ooh. Yeah, that's right. We listened to a couple episodes at lunch yeah, the other yeah. day. And, and I mean, you will come across some amazing, amazing title. Like, like they just did this uh, two-part series called How to Have Job Security. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It teaches you how to, you know, work hard and how to make yourself, uh, uh, you know, uh, indispensable, th those kind of things. Uh, here's a qu another question. Uh, another episode, Moving from Dependence to Independence, mm. The Optimistic Leader, Five Questions Every Resilient Leader Asks Themselves, Leaders Make It Happen. I mean, this is a really good show mm -hmm. uh, for leadership. And then there are other shows that I listen to time to time, you know, um, so, but they're more preaching oriented, things like that. Uh, One Extraordinary Marriage mm -hmm. by Tony yep. Elisa DeLorenzo, great yep. podcast for your personal marriage, mm -hmm. you know, those kind of things. And so they're, they're, they're going to be, they're going to be on the show in a couple in, of weeks, in just a few weeks. Yep. Yeah. Two weeks they'll, they'll be, be on, on the show. Mm -hmm. You're right. You're right. Very, very true. Awesome. Very cool. Love that. Trevor R. How do you find time to do everything you do? Oh, I've asked that question. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of hard work, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of time, uh, making, uh, the most of the time I have mm -hmm. because, you know, we, we, we don't have any more time than, mm -hmm the president of the United States or 
the homeless man on the streets of India. Mm-hmm. We all get the same amount of time. But how do you maximize that time? How do you do what needs to be done? So for me, it is, you know, time boxing. For me, it is knowing, hey, these are the things that got to be get done today. This is the time limit. This is These are the obstructions that will be coming, mm-hmm. uh, obstacles along the way. This is how I need to manage that. So that's how uh, I think about time. And I begin my day with Bible reading and prayer, mm. which are indispensable. So once I do that, I know my focus is in the right direction. I'm headed in the right direction. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, even when I'm sitting down watching TV at night, I have my computer with me. I'm looking at something. Mm-hmm. I manage my time. I don't just sit back and just, you know, frivolous entertainment. Yeah. entertainment. yeah. You told me that a while ago. I think you shared with all of us that, you know, we all have the same amount of time, whether you are uh, the homeless man on the street or you're the president of the United States. No matter where you are, we are all given the same amount of time. It's what you do with the time that separates you, that, yeah. that distinguishes you. And that helped me tremendously, you know, just to kind of think about what how to order time and how to how to organize things and time management uh that's huge that's yeah. key and that's that's one of the things i admire most about you is is how you are able to continue to take on projects and continue to pursue excellence and, and dig deep and mm. and research and craft sermons that are mind-blowing and life-changing and be a part of the community and and impact all of us uh teaching us with leadership um it's just i mean that question how do you do how do you have time to do what you do we get to see that up close and personal, the way you manage your time, and it's it's a huge benefit to me and, and to us. Well, it's a learning. biblical thing, redeeming mm-hmm. the time. You know? That's right. The Bible talks about redeem the time because the days are evil. Mm-hmm. So I want to redeem every moment I have for the glory of God. And I think when you have that out that outlook, it not only trickles down to the people who work under you, but it also trickles down to the people. I mean, it trickles down to the people who are under you, but it inspires people to make the most mm. of their time. Like when we first, when we, you, you first, you know, we, we were approached about doing this show, mm-hmm. about doing a daily show. It wasn't an idea that we came up with. Right. Uh, the, a radio network came up to us and said, we would like to propose that you guys would do this and be on our network. And at the time we were like a daily radio show on top of everything we're doing. Work. That's a lot of work. That's a lot. And we met and we were like, is this impossible? And, but we prayed on it. We talked to you yeah. mm-hmm. and then you came and you were like, guys, I don't, I, this is a lot, but I don't don't think it's impossible and when someone says that to you you start to realize it's really not impossible yeah if you if you apply yourself and we do it and we work as a team we can do it okay. and so it was like okay this is scary but we're gonna do it and now we've got a daily radio right. show and mm-hmm. it doesn't feel like this is a big impossible right. herculean task yeah, yeah. And of course it requires planning mm-hmm. prepping i mean we we you guys plan tremendously well the entire team the radio team with Mo, uh, uh, Ryan and mm-hmm. John and David and Nicholas. I mean, they all plan things out um, and and put things in in the proper category, and and then you come up with a question. I mean, this this it takes work, mm-hmm. but y- you guys are amazing, and with God's help, I mean, ultimately is God mm. Amen. giving us the strength, the wisdom, the grace we need. So I'm I'm. I'm just amazed at you guys. Amen. Well, it, it, it came from watching you That's use right. your time wisely. That's right. Our next question comes from Grant L. Who is your dream podcast guest? Jesus. I mean, I mean no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord that would him, be the just, Lord himself. Lord, welcome all. to the podcast today. This is go all out. Why not? I know. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> oh, man. I just thought an idea of like Jesus himself like sitting here. It's like we ran out of mics, but we give him one like one of the older mics. <laughs> give the Lord the good mic. Yeah, <laughs> or, or he like he restores it. He just makes it he work. He just makes it like a like now. A I'm, great now I'm mic. envisioning like uh you know one day in eternity you're listening to Clearview today Heaven Edition with our drop it on shot right? and Jesus. Wow, <laughs> that's incredible. <laughs> New episodes daily to have the or Lord. I guess not daily, our, but the Lord for, himself forever. on our podcast. That's right. <laughs> you could settle all arguments right then and there. So like, all right, baptism. Do you? need it to be saved or not like instantly nobody that's argues your, back nobody that's your definitive no answer. aggressive text yeah. oh mercy uh this is one from david w what's your go-to dessert mm. <laughs> is that to you david i think david <laughs> might have s- sent that in as a joke <laughs> but it's here so we got to answer well, it. well it's it's tough i mean i mean you name it i love cheesecake mm. i love pecan pie uh what, do I, what else do i love i love <laughs> Blizzards <laughs> mm. from Dairy Queen. Mm-hmm. Oh, I can eat yeah. some strawberry cheesecake blizzard mm, that's, cookie dough. Those do, those do sound kind of good. It's, so, the, I mean, sky's the limit there. Yeah. Mm. That sounds really good. Um, this comes from uh, Carter V. 
Carter wants to know, if you only had one book of the Bible to preach through for a year, what book would you choose? Only one book. Like only one book, book to can preach, you make to last preach from a year? for a year. Oh, there are plenty of books that can go on for a year and beyond. You I mean, mean, you, you, like, like, which books would you would do for a year? I mean, goodness gracious. I mean, Book of Revelation can go on oh, for a yeah, year. Oh, yeah, Revelation. Uh, yeah, I should have. Yeah. My mind should have jumped to that pretty instantly, yeah. especially since we're about to do we're, Revelation. We're headed into Revelation. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're starting that this weekend. Yeah. Yep. But if I were to do one and that's the only book left, only one left, mm-hmm. there's no other book. I don't get any of the choices. Just for a year. For a year. For a year. And then you can go back to whichever one. Colossians. Really? Yeah. Didn't you say you, you hadn't preached all the way through Colossians no. yet? No. Wow. And having gone to Turkey uh-huh. and standing on this hill and knowing that underneath is a city of Colossae, mm. it hasn't wow. been excavated yet. Colossae has not been excavated. So wow. when you go there, you just you just see this hill. The only thing that is visible is this this side of this hill, which is a theater. And the reason we know it's a theater is because of the seats. Other than that, it hasn't been opened up yet. Mm. Huh. Wow. But that's Colossae. And there's so much more under the ground, we just don't know yet. Yeah. Wow. Because sometimes people think, and it's all there. And then to sit there, because when I was walking around that hill, walking up on top of the hill, walking around the hill, all of that, and, and have you, if you ever read the book of Colossae, uh, Col- uh, Colossians, <laughs> um, it has the most highly developed, lofty Christology of the entire Bible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just rich. And so, yeah, I would love to do that. Did we do, I remember in Converge on our call, when you were teaching Converge a few months, it was, might might have been last year, but we, you did that. We said, all right, let's pick, let's throw a bunch of books out that we like. Cause we, we we do that fun thing where it's like, what are we going to study next? We just take suggestions and then start narrowing them down until we get one. And I remember someone pitched out Colossians and it got down to where like Colossians was in like the final four. Mm. And I remember you being like, all right, we can do Colossians. Are you sure that's what you guys want? <laughs> I can't remember if we actually did it or if that's how we said, landed. I remember saying that. I can't remember if we did it or if we just landed with Samuel, but we did Samuel sh- shortly after. Yeah. But I distinctly remember being like, oh yeah, Colossians is good. And you being like, we can do it. Are, are y'all sure that's yeah, what you want? Because we'll be there for a while. We'll be in Colossians for a little bit. This is what it sounds like. You ready for here? I'm, one or two mm-hmm, verses already. of that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. This is Colossians chapter 1, verse 15. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven, that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities uh, um, uh, or powers. All things were created bef- through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. Paul is like bringing his A mm. game. And like, it's like, what was that? Five verses? You could spend like seven or eight weeks well, just, easily. To, just there. Yeah. Easily. Easy. But here's the sad thing, and I will move on. Yeah. You know, the church in Colossae mm-hmm. got this letter. Mm-hmm. I believe the loftiest Christ, uh, Christology is in the book of Colossians. Mm. And today, you can't even find that church. Mm, golly. It's buried under the dirt. So what does that say to us? Just because you have a lot of knowledge mm-hmm. and deep theology does mm-hmm. not mean you're going to last. That's right. Exactly right. That's right. It comes on to, are you passionate about the gospel of Jesus Christ? Are you living holy lives? Are you reaching the lost? Mm-hmm. If you don't do that, you can have all this stuff. I mean, look at this. Here, here's another one. Verse 24, I now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God, which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has... And we can go on and on. Yeah. It's like, whoa, yeah. Dude deep is stuff. Really mm. giving it to him. Preacher, we like some deep preaching. <laughs> <laughs> we like some meat and potatoes. Well, you can have meat and potatoes and still be buried. That's right. Lost forever. Mm. That's right. That's a great point. So, anyways, we we'll move on. That's awesome. <laughs> hey, Graham C, what are you reading through your devotional right now? Through my devotional, I'm, I'm reading some works on prayer. Just kind of just focusing on mm-hmm. prayer. Nice. That's awesome. This one comes from um, Elizabeth M. Elizabeth says, what's one thing you miss from India that you can't get in the States? 
my grandmother's cooking. Oh. oh, yeah. It is sad some days to think about that a lot of those foods that I've tasted and ate, I remember the taste. Mm, really? But yeah, oh, yeah, I remember the taste, the, sm- the, 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 the scent of the food, mm-hmm. but it's gone forever. Just going to an Indian restaurant doesn't do it. I mean, mm. people think, like, well, let's just go over there and eat. But do you really think every Indian restaurant like like just tastes like the like, food you grew up at with at home? Like grandma's yeah, kitchen. Yeah, yeah, no, it's not. No, that's I mean, I, I have so many tastes that are gone forever. Wow, wow. Caitlin C. just listened to your episodes on the Wild West a week ago. Who is your favorite Wild West personality? <laughs> <laughs> I like Doc Holiday. I think he's pretty cool. Or should you say Doc Shalliday? Doc Shalliday. Doc Shalliday right there. This is Doc Shalliday given to me by by Doc Willaday. Doc Will- <laughs> <laughs> There's David over there with yeah. his hat. David gave it to me. David Williamson. Thank you, David. Um, but that's Doc Holiday is pretty cool. Mm. Um you know, there's this is a lot of characters from the old West mm-hmm. that were amazing. Wild Earp was great. Wild Bill Hickok was great. Buffalo Bill was pretty amazing. Bat Masterson. These are all yeah. actual people. Okay? That's these awesome. are not make belief people. They're amazing characters. Mm. Yeah. We got time for one more, I think. Okay. This comes from Jason R. Jason R wants to know what's the status of your shoe game? My shoe game? Shoe game. Like what, what What kind of shoes do you wear? What kind do you like to wear? What's oh. your favorite? What's your go-to? I knew as soon as you read it. I was I was not going to read it out loud, but then I was like, yeah, okay, I think Ryan's going <laughs> to no, go. Right, shoe, your shoe game. It. I knew it was just going to confuse yeah, shoe him. shoe game. I am a big Allen Edmonds fan. So, you know, th- that's the one that I love um, because uh, that's, I, those shoes last a long, long, long time. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's, that's my go-to. Where do you land on New Balances? New Balance is pretty good. There you go. New Balance is good. Asics, so, Asics are pretty good. Yeah, I like Asics. Now, if I were to wear New Balances in here and get roasted, Pastor Shaw, you would then say that that's that's not appropriate. That's not okay for because I I got hit hard on the radio in front really? of a lot of listeners. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Wow. I had people writing in comforting me yeah. because my roasting was so bad. Well, I mean, I like I like those shoes. I like um, I mean, so many. I can't even begin to explain. But since we said that, I'm going to read a passage. Mm-hmm. Uh, from the book of Romans. Oh, oh yes. Chapter 10 uh-huh. and verse 15. Okay. Mm-hmm. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. There you go. There you go. So those are the best shoes. That's right. The shoes that go to somebody and share the gospel of Jesus. Amen. Mm. I love it. I don't That's care the what they look like. You don't You don't care if they're New Balances. You don't no. care if they're, what was it, Allen Edmonds? Yeah. If they're preaching the gospel, they're beautiful. That's, That's right. right. Beautiful. Love I love it. it. If you guys enjoyed today's topic, you want your questions answered on Lightning Round Questions, make sure you send those in to 252-582-5028. Or you can email us at contact at clearviewtodayshow.com. Check out that website as well. You can support us financially on that same website. Click that donate button. Let us know that gift is coming from our Clearview Today Show family. We are grateful for you. We count you as our teammates and as our family members as we together reach the nations with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We love you guys. We'll see you next time on Clearview Today. Mm-hmm.